Thank you, Carmen Rider, for the tag. We have a tweet here from this blue checkmark person, Rosalind, and she says, Why did a white woman write a cookbook about dumplings and noodles? Rosalind then posted a quote talking about the noodle lady's experience and a bunch of question marks afterwards. I guess she just doesn't get it. Like, yeah, white people also enjoy noodles and dumplings. Shocking. Her first tweet, by the way, got over 1,100 likes, but over 5,300 quote tweets, meaning by far most people talking about this don't like her take. Let me show you just how poorly the take is being received, because she even turned on this feature that says who can reply, only people that Rosalind follows or mention can reply. In other words, only her inner circle. And even they are roasting her. Like, look at this. Wait till you find out that Arabs can make pizza, Russians can make omelets, and Japanese can make burgers. That should be fun to watch. By the way, dumplings aren't exclusively Asian. They're also native in Europe. In Germany, they're commonly known as Nodel or Klosch. And this response got almost 28,000 likes compared to her take that has like 1,000. She got obliterated by this dude, IGP, that says, Ha! The woman has been learning East slash Southeast Asian cooking for over 15 years and attended an actual noodle school in China. It's like you think it's impossible for anyone who isn't Chinese to be just as versed in preparing dumplings as anyone of the culture. Seems like a good time to shout out the noodle lady that has the op all offended, by the way. Her name is Pippa Middlehurst. And check this out. Over on her Instagram at Pippi Eats, you can find her there too. Uh, she used to be a cancer research scientist and now she's a cook. Seems like she's very happy with what she's doing too. Back at her responses, another blue check mark calls her out. Sam says, don't be racist, celebrate the diversity. Kaiser says, because your skin color doesn't dictate your skills or abilities when it comes to cooking a certain type of food. And Rogert says, dumplings and noodles are literally just white flour and water. No matter what you do to them, they're white flour and water. You're crying racism over white flour and water. It's just hilarious how she limited the people that can respond to her take, and she's still getting called out. Well, the next day, Rosalind decided to respond to the backlash, and it's pretty embarrassing. She starts by showing this email that she got, and uh, it's not a nice email, but it's like she's ignoring all the top responses that actually got a lot of engagement. Like, really, you're going to respond to the one email that nobody really knew about instead of the tweet that got like over 20,000 likes? Plus, who's to say she didn't just send the email to herself? Unsurprisingly, she continued to cherry pick responses, responding to ones that are rude with like no engagement instead of the ones with the top engagement that are calling out her prejudice. And then she posted this meme or something. I don't know. She's trying to be witty here and complains about white people, despite the fact that there are plenty of non-white people also criticizing her and uh, she even went and blamed 4chan as well here i mean dude you literally made it so only people you follow can respond but sure blame 4chan and then she complained more about white people like i'm not even reading all her nonsense anymore she's unhinged in my opinion cries about pippa middlehurst some more she's like jealous that she's successful at what she does she went on and made like five more tweets after that continuing to cherry pick and just make prejudicial takes in my opinion, so I don't even want to read any more of it. If you want to read more of it, you know where to find it. However, you might want to see this part because Pippa actually responded to Rosalind. Hi Rosalind, trying to approach this without defensiveness and it seems as though your issue is with the larger system of injustice in food publishing. Under-representation of BIPOC authors, over-representation of white authors, rather than me personally or I think so anyway attacking an individual that you know nothing about. Pasting a picture of my face and calling me an arrogant and uncreative white woman allows others who respect your opinion to justify harassing me. In my experience, tweets like this don't challenge the systemic issue, or instigate any change. It just serves to temporarily make me the poster child for that system of injustice, that no doubt I am a part of and simply leads to dogpiling and mounds of threatening DMs telling me, for for example to go and drown. You deserve to fail and it ends there. Pippi ended her take by saying that she doesn't use Twitter anymore and linking to resources that provide actual social justice work. And I think that's a great approach because people like Rosalind, in my opinion, they just screech on Twitter about people they deem problematic. Like they essentially just want to witch hunt people under the guise of it being for social justice. But they, again, don't do anything to actually help anybody. Meanwhile, the people that actually are helping others are the ones getting harassed. Well, Rosalind also responded to Pippi. And I'm not going to read all of her responses because she's got like 10 tweets or so. And she's like incapable of responding to people without sounding prejudicial. Like Rosalind makes it sound like the only people defending Pippi are white supremacists. Let me again remind you that people that she literally follows were also defending Pippi. Like for that matter, I'm even more inclined to be on Pippi's side here than Rosalind's. And I'm not a white supremacist. Like every day I'm criticizing the Western community for things. Furthermore, for like over a year, I've been defending Asian artists and mangakas from harassment. That again, often comes from the Western community. So yeah, Rosalind, no, you can't just blame <laughs> white supremacists and 4chan because people don't like your bigoted take. Given 
given how many people pushed back against the bigoted take though, kind of a positive story actually. So hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. And I might only have two videos out today after all this one took a bit longer than usual, but I look forward to catching you in the next one.